Fimo's laboratory. Removal of insoluble impurities from water. The drinking water we use in our daily life is obtained from various sources like lakes and rivers which are mostly polluted. The polluted water is purified by purification equipments through various processes like sublimation. Let us discuss about these processes in the following experiments. Decantation. Take some impure water and allow it to rest for a few hours. The suspended soil particles in the sample of water settles down at the bottom as sediments. This is called sedimentation. The clear water can be seen at the top. The sediments can be removed from the water by gradually pouring the clear water into another container without disturbing the sediments at the bottom. Filtration Separation of insoluble impurities with the help of a filter paper is called filtration. Take a glass jar, paper board and some impure water. First, make a funnel in the paper board and pour the impure water through the funnel made of paper board. The insoluble substances are caught in the filter paper and drops of clear water trickle into the beaker kept under the funnel and collects as a filtrate. The water thus collected is free from solid particles and this process is called filtration. Measurement of Volume In our daily life, the things we buy from shops for our daily needs are all packed and its measurements is mentioned in kilograms, liters and meters. Let us discuss about the ways of measurements in the following experiment. Here's a block of length 1 cm, breadth 1 cm and height 1 cm. Now, the capacity of the block to hold something inside it is known as its volume. The volume of this block is the product of its length multiplied by breadth multiplied by height. 1 cm into 1 cm into 1 cm is equal to 1 and its unit is centimeter cube. Therefore, the volume of this block is 1 cm cube. Volume is equal to length into breadth into height. What will be the volume of a cube having each side equal to 10 cm? Volume is equal to 10 cm into 10 cm into 10 cm is equal to 1000 cm cube. But 1000 cm cube is equal to 1 liter. A liter is divided into milliliters. 1 liter is equal to 1000 milliliter. Hence, 1 cm cube is equal to 1 milliliter. In the laboratory, we measure volume by using the measuring cylinder, the burette and the pipette. A measuring cylinder can be used to measure the volume of a solid also. Take water in a measuring cylinder and note its initial level. Now, gently lower stone into the water. The water level rises. Note the new level of water. The difference between the two levels of water gives the volume of the stone. Floating objects You must have observed that certain objects like ice, cork, wood, etc. float in water but certain objects like iron, stone, etc. sink in water. Only those objects float in water whose density is less than that of the water. If the density of an object is greater than that of water, the object sinks in water. For example, iron. 
the upward push of water on a floating object is called upthrust or bioven force. Take three glass bowls and fill the first one with mercury, second one with water and the third one with kerosene. Take three corks of same weight and put one in each bowl and observe. The first cock in mercury does not sink, it floats. The second one in water is floating. But the third one in the kerosene has sunk. Bioant force is one factor that helps things to float. Density of the object is another factor that makes it float or sink. The same object may sink to different depths in different liquids. It is because densities of different liquids vary. So, an object which floats in water can sink in kerosene, which is less dense than water. Similarly, an object which can float in mercury may sink in water. Mercury is the densest of all liquids. We can measure the densities of all liquids with the help of an instrument called hydrometer. Gravitational force. All objects, when let go, fall freely towards the ground. A stone or an apple, when released, falls freely towards the ground. This is because of the force which the earth exerts on all objects on or near its surface. This force is termed as gravitational force. There is a popular story that Newton was sitting under an apple tree and an apple fell on his head and he suddenly thought of the universal law of gravitation. As in all such legends, this is almost certainly not true in its details, but the story contains elements of what actually happened. The constant of proportionality G is known as the universal gravitational constant. It is termed a universal constant because it is thought to be the same at all places and all times and thus universally characterizes the intrinsic strength of the gravitational force. Frictional force The force acting between two surfaces in contact and tending to oppose motion is called the force of friction or frictional force. Observe this car moving on the road. The driver wants to stop the car by the yellow line. He operates the car brake. Car slows down. Observe the car has crossed a little beyond the yellow line. What is the reason? Observe the tire buttons of the car. It is worn out. There is no gap between the road surface and the tire bottom. Hence, there is no way for air to penetrate and it lacks gripness on the road. Observe this car. The driver wants to stop the car by the yellow line. He operates the car brake. Car slows down. Observe the car has stopped on the yellow line. The tire is new and in good condition. So, there is space between the tire buttons and road surface. Hence, air circulates and causes gripness. This is due to frictional force. Observe a man walking on a slippery floor. His shoes are in a good condition. There is space between his shoes and the floor. Air penetrates through the gap and causes gripness. This is another example for frictional force. Magnetic force in industries, magnetic force is used to lift or transport heavy iron materials. Magnetic force is also used to identify the directions. 
let us discuss about the magnetic force in the following experiment. You have often seen a magnet and played with it. It attracts iron nails, pins and other iron objects. It can also attract or repel another magnet. We call all forces associated with magnets as magnetic forces. Static electricity. Electricity is a type of energy and is present in many forms. We can see this through an experiment. To reveal static electricity, let us do a simple experiment. Take a plastic rod, woolen cloth and a paper. Cut the paper into small pieces. Take the plastic rod and bring it near the small pieces of paper. What does happen? Just nothing. Now, rub this plastic rod with wool briskly and bring it again near the same pieces of paper. This time, the pieces of paper stick to the rod. This happens because the rod gets electrically charged due to rubbing. When you rub a plastic rod with wool, it starts attracting small objects like paper pieces, etc. This is called static electricity. Change of state due to heat. Due to the atmospheric heat, the solid state ice mountains melt to the liquid state and join the sea. Again, the liquid state water vaporizes to gas and forms cloud. The gas state cloud cools and gets converted as liquid state rain. This takes place as a cycle. Let us see the experiment based on this principle. Take a candle. Cut the candle into small pieces and place the pieces in a dish. Heat the dish. See what happens. The candle melts. Stop heating. Let it cool. Observe the change. On heating, solid candle changes into liquid form and on cooling, it changes into solid.